welcome to you all. Uh, who are you? You are a nice mix of a lot of ICT decision makers from different sectors. Uh, you are people from ICT business, government representatives. It's my pleasure to announce you our first speaker, uh, Professor Dr. Johan Albrecht, and he will talk about, uh, amongst other subjects, artificial intelligence. And you know this person over here, and you know what he promised during his campaign and also during his inauguration. He said, I want to bring jobs back uh, to the US. Now, how can we explain the job losses? Uh, if we are more productive, we need less people to produce more, of course. Uh. The main point is that if you outsource everything in the long run, you will lose your ability to innovate. And that's a, a very dangerous uh, evolution, according to Andy Grove. And some of those sectors here mentioned could even boost their productivity by 800%, mainly the computer and electronics industries. I fear that Mr. Trump cannot do so much to bring back the jobs that have been lost because of productivity. The new set of technologies will indeed bring back jobs to Europe, in industry and to the US, but of course, highly skilled jobs. Huh? So this could be some kind of re-employment opportunity also for industry in the West. And eventually all of us could end up in a situation like this. Huh? We have to prepare somehow to a different organization of the labor market. We still most likely face a scarcity of labor in the Western economies. In many countries, policymakers fear that new technologies can only lead to massive job losses and we have already unemployment problems. So I think it's pivotal to really set a good framework to use the opportunity of uh, intelligence uh, in many formats. And I think that should be the key uh, objective of policymakers. Because we have an aging economy, huh? many people will retire, as you know, in the next decades. Huh? And we need good technologies to fill this kind of gap. Eh? And there's no guarantee that policymakers will decide to replace humans by AI. Eh? So again, you have political decisions eh, that will have a, a, an impact on the, the, the spread of those new technologies. Eh? You will all contribute to, let's say, the data set behind those systems. Eh? We, we, we use more and more wearable devices that will give information somehow on the status of our body that can be used in a system. When you use, let's say, a smartwatch, eh? this could lead to, of course, many data streams that can be used to improve things like uh, healthcare, to give you guidance, to uh, have uh, personal coaching and things like that. So uh, I think that uh, devices that simply gather and process data all will lead to better decisions in the long run. Analyzing all information available and then making sense out of it. Huh? This will lead to a much higher productivity in the healthcare sector. This hitting the public sphere, meaning it will be regulated somehow and this type of regulation will really determine the job impact in the long run. Huh? So, Every data point is input to a broader system and I think uh, data will be better used in the long run in every field. The big change is not in the job market maybe, but could be related to how AI and science will change humanity. So last year, for those of you who were here, um, I was explaining that we were facing a kind of Baltic breakthrough. Uh, as most of you know, telecoms was our cornerstone, but we got so many questions to do much more and to extend our scope that we said, okay, we definitely have to do it. What we did not see coming was that it was going very, very, very fast. Baltic made a market study on ICT trends, mainly focused on communication tools, uh, now we were very, very happy that this market study could be extended uh, in a collaboration, a very constructive, open collaboration with Proximus Orange and Telenet and Beltec. And I want to thank all members who responded to it. Uh, we had 1,540 companies participating. A subject which is very, very important for us is the General Data Protection Regulation, so the GDPR. This regulation is very complex and leaves quite some uh, room for interpretation. The compliance with the General Data uh, Protection Regulation, which needs to be there in May 2018 already, so that's just one year from now. 
what we want to be on the lobby part is to be the voice of the business uh, ICT user. Issues with major software vendors on software licenses. And we also have a very intensive dialogue with BIPT and the mobile operators to come to an improvement on the inter coverage, especially inter coverage for multi operators. What is happening with the different the use of different technologies that come together? What is the impact on the contracts? What is the impact for procurement? So we have a lot of questions, a lot of topics. So thank you very much for being here.